A cozy little country place where people meet and make themselves at home. Well, it's not exactly a home, but it's the best little whorehouse in Texas. Translation of a Broadway musical to a motion picture has often proven a financial risk. With a $30 million budget at stake, Universal Pictures took out the best insurance they could find in Burt Reynolds and Dolly Parton under the guidance of writer-director Colin Higgins. Well, I guess it's always a risk, but uh, the way I look at it is it's a movie that I'd like to go and see, and a lot of people that I know is, uh, would like to see it, so I'm just operating from that premise. For Burt Reynolds, the risk was singing. In this case, opposite Dolly Parton in a song she wrote herself. And the sexier things we fantasize. Just to make it out in the broad daylight. And sneaking, sneaking around, around with, with you. Sneaking around with you. Number one, uh, flattered that they wanted me to do it. Because my musical record is not real good. I uh, spent a lot of time, really uh, about two and a half months working with the voice coach and uh, and then Dolly uh, I told her to be really brutally honest with me you know if I couldn't cut it and I knew she would be anyway I was so comfortable with her being there and reassuring me and uh, it was just like uh, an, an actor uh, having the right kind of director around I'm not upset about this film at all uh, I know this film will be a hit for Dolly Parton this picture presented a different kind of risk would her audience accept her in the role of a whorehouse madam? I think it's a big responsibility. I think we have to protect our public as far as what we're doing. So I, I gave it a lot of thought, and I, and I talked to my folks about it, and I, and I saw it as a story about life, a way to show that these people have personalities. These people have reasons for being what they are. what my audience wants from me now that we have gone through all these things together and I depend on the audience a lot and the songs in this movie are more me more of what I have been trying to do all the routes I've had to take to try to get to a place to where my music the simple version of my music the country flavor of my music would be accepted by a broad audience so I think that I have really accomplished a great deal of things with this movie Based on a true story, the movie got its name from a 1974 article in Playboy magazine. From there, the tale was retold in song on the Broadway stage. Both versions were based on a series of news reports involving the town of LaGrange, Texas, which had sanctioned operation of a bordello within city limits, and a Houston TV reporter by the name of Marvin Zindler, who broke the story and brought the chicken ranch to national attention. Marvin Zindler! Witness News. Zindler explains why he went after the bordello. I went after him because the Attorney General had been in conducting an investigation for organized crime. They knew how much money was being taken in over there, over a million dollars, a million and a half dollars at the chicken ranch. However, Edna Milton, the real-life madam, still denies Zindler's allegation. He wanted to make it into something that seemed like organized crime, but all it was was a few women out there in the country making a living. Zindler also implicated LaGrange Sheriff T.J. Flournoy in his reports, alleging that the lawman took payoffs to keep the bordello open. Has your office or you or any of your deputies ever accepted any money from her or any way like that? Not a penny. I could never prove that he ever got a dime. In casting the film, instead of going for the real-life look, director Higgins went for real box office, and this is what he's come up with. The Sheriff played by Burt Reynolds, The Madam by Dolly Parton, and The Reporter 
by Dom DeLuise. Good neighbors, we're about to enter the whorehouse itself. Good. Everybody up! <laughs> Here. Senator, the eyes of Texas are upon you. Melvin is uh, a man who is um, possessed. Uh, he, he really is a good man inside. He really believes that he's doing what is right, and that is to close down the, the chicken ranch, the best little whorehouse in Texas. And in this movie, you see that the people who happen to be involved in the chicken ranch have hearts, are human do feel. When I thought about it and I thought about it, I thought, well, this person, this lady, this madam, she is me because I am just full of life and love and energy for all kinds of people. I have sampled enough of everything in life to, to say that I have lived. This lady, this character that I'm playing, although I didn't own a whorehouse, if I had not been as fortunate as I am, who knows what I could, could have been. That's your job, Ed Earl. Ain't that what they pay you for? I know what my job is. Don't be telling me what my damn job is. I could close this place down in a New York minute. My father was a Southern sheriff. And I see a lot of uh, Ed Earl and my dad. And uh, I think he's really, a, I think he's really a good man. I think he's a man with a lot of principles. And he just has a real hard time living with the fact that he is uh, in love with uh, a woman that runs a house of ill repute. And so he can't bring himself uh, to marry her, even though he, he does really love her. And uh, it's sort of what the picture's all about, really. Just lots of good will and maybe one small thrill. Just lots of good will and maybe one small thrill. But there's nothing.